It's the takeover. It's the takeover right here on the award-winning CBJ radio. We're always bringing you the coolest artists on Wednesday nights and tonight's no different. Chase the Comet is an alt metal band comprised of couple Nika and Alex who in 2016, they took a one-way ticket from Russia to Los Angeles with a guitar, a microphone, and a dream. Well, their brand new album Illumination Part 1, along with the single The Road, is out now. We're excited to have vocalist Nika and guitarist Alex from Chase the Comet on the show. First, guys, thanks so much for coming on. Our pleasure. Thank you for for having us. (laughs) Yeah, what a story. First, I'm thinking... What what you, what were your friends and family thinking in 2016 when you said, "Hey, we're we're moving to LA. We're going to chase our dream." Um, I would say uh, I don't really remember what our family said. I'm sure I they were pretty remember, excited. I don't remember the support. I think they might have expected us to go there for quite some time. You know, yeah, and then, and come and then back. to get back <laughs> because it's obviously tough and and challenging, and probably they. Uh, didn't know how far we would go with our, you know, music adventure and uh, stuff like this. But I think they were expecting us to get back in like maybe six months. Yes. <laughs> Some, yes. Something, like, something like that. And then we got stuck for five and a half years without right. seeing our families and seeing our friends. This is when they got that. This got this gotten really serious for yeah. us, you know, mm-hmm. our, our music path in Los Angeles and in the United States in general. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy road for you two, that's for sure. You fell in love with music. You guys were in different bands in Russia, and then you came to the States. So, well, first, when you come to L.A., where did you stay? How did you guys survive? That's a very, very good question. Thank you, Jeff. Actually, I wrote a whole book on this topic, um, talk, well, telling about our adventures and, you know, how it happened, like, literally by days. <laughs> And this book is available on Amazon. It's called Chasing the Dream by Nika Comet. Uh, oh, wow. me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, mm, trying to make it succinct, we had a few acquaintances from back in Russia because we have achieved some success in Russia with, as you mentioned, different bands. Um, and uh, that's where we... But this wasn't the reason why we knew those people, you know, because they were not close friends to us. So we would not like hang out in in Moscow, for instance. Right. Yeah. But yeah. when we got in Los Angeles, we were like, OK, who do we know? Who yeah. Do, who do we call? <laughs> who are you going to call? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we had a few acquaintances. As, exactly. As, That's why I said yeah, not as, friends, but acquaintances, people yeah, who we barely yeah, knew. Yeah, yeah. And then we reached out to them. And then, you know, with some people, we stayed for a few weeks yeah. with some people we stayed for a few months surprisingly and then also you know it was a wild ride we literally couch surfed a lot until i think it was six months later yeah that, it took us about like a half of the year yeah we were able to finally rent a room in like a tiny, commune room. tiny room in yeah. inglewood and people would be like you live in Inglewood, and if, if yeah. you... guess what, we were still happy to have our little, you know, territory. Yeah, it was like you know, the as typical, little as it was. Yeah, typical story. We were sharing a kitchen, we we're sharing bathrooms, you know, and then slowly we grew. I think it was uh, almost a year later that we were able to finally rent our own studio, yeah. which later became the actual studio. I mean, unfortunately, we were not that prepared to go to the United States. We could have done better, obviously, but. You you know, we were so adventurous and so young. And we were and pretty much just drinking with our friends, saying our goodbyes. Yeah. We were like, okay, <laughs> yeah. we're going to go to the United States. It's like, you know, you hang out and the next day you end up in Las Vegas, for instance, like a, like a movie scenario. So this was us pretty much. Like we just went there, not really planning our budget or whatnot. So it was just, it was just like a leap of faith, you know, yeah, that's, that's what happened. That's crazy. But how was the language barrier? Because Nika, you speak like four languages. Alex, I think, I don't know if you, did you know any English when you came here? Well, it was tough for me. It was the most difficult challenge for me in terms of like overcoming my, um, you know, uh, barrier or how um, shy I was when I was uh, trying to talk to to people in English. Because I was just, I kept silent for almost like, maybe two years um, <laughs> and only, only after that I started like pushing myself out of my comfort zone because I was like okay I'm here and I want to communicate and I want to have friends and I want to talk to people so probably this is the moment when I start like learning English like hard and constantly you know like pretty much having a system so that, that's what I did yeah, yeah but it was tough 
the biggest issue, you know, was not speaking itself because he was able to speak, you know, like the the basic needs. Yeah. But to express one's personality and, you know, be as smart, as quickly Humorous, reacting, yeah. as in sharp. Exactly. As in your own is your as in your first language. Yeah. That was the real challenge for I him. was missing that big time. <laughs> yeah. But oh. you know, you know, you know what helped me? I, we started working as party characters for kids. For kids, and this is when you have the environment of kids who you have to entertain, right? And you start speaking the easiest language possible. So it's like, hey, let's go there, let's do this, let's jump, let's run, let's play limbo. Do you have a? Do you want to have a balloon and stuff like this? So pretty simple. And this is how you get the pace uh, of the of the language. So it's like you learn slowly, like a kid. Almost like a kid, you know. Yeah. And this is the perfect environment for me. Yeah, that, that that's awesome. Go check them out. Chase the Comet. They're at chasethecomet.com. They're on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify. The video for The Road is out now. And Illumination Part 1, their album, is also out now. Well, you guys, what, you're in Uzbekistan now? How long have you been there? How'd you get there? What's happening? Um, we've been here for five months, and before that, we lived for a few months in uh, Colombia, in Argentina, and uh, last year it was also Georgia for a month. Mm -hmm. So basically, after we we had been stuck in the United States for five and a half years, and don't get us wrong, we love America. We traveled a lot. We visited many national parks. We in toured. States, yes. Yeah. Um, we didn't make it to the East Coast in this state, but we'd been there before. It, it, it was not our first trip to America. So, I mean, we traveled a lot. And while there's still a lot of places to see and, you know, cities to play in the United States, um, we really wanted to get out of the country and, you know, to recharge our energy, to recharge our batteries, and also to see, you know, to see the world. Some countries were just on our bucket list, you know, like as, yeah. as Argentina. I, I've always dreamt of, you know, going there and seeing like what it looks like, how people live there. And uh, I'm happy that the previous year was very special, actually. So, yeah, we've visited many countries. Many, we did many a lot cities, of different yes. things to, to get, you know, to come back strong. Illumination is just the first part, as uh, you have mentioned. So there's going to be a second part. And we needed to find that inspiration somewhere, you know. And while living in L.A. for seven years was definitely, you know, a level up for us in many, many fields, it was still very draining and, you know, People living in big cities in America will probably understand this very well. Oh, yeah. How draining it may be for a creative person to live in a big city, you know, always trying to grind and like hustle. So we needed to take that to take down this pressure, pressure yeah. and uh, you know, come back. You have to strong. go, yeah, you have to go travel time after time, you know, to recharge your inner battery to see the world because it's beautiful, it's exciting. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot to explore out there, and, and definitely don't be afraid to, to go see it. Like, you two definitely aren't afraid to go see it. The third, This is your third album in English. Was it time yeah. to sign with a label? Why Pavement Now? Um, I guess I kind of, I, I have kind of answered a little bit of that. We felt very, you know that we have you know invested a lot and i'm talking both time and money and a lot of our energy and we were running out of everything you know we'd been independent for a long time yeah. we'd been doing everything ourselves and it's you know mostly the two of us so we've been doing everything and socials COVID, COVID hit us pretty hard as well yeah, yeah. yeah. And and uh, we were also having some documents issues, like really big documents issues. And, you know, if anybody's interested, again, uh, my book. Read the book or listen yes, to it. Yes, yeah. yes. I have also recorded an audio version also uh, available on Audible. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we, we wanted to see if something can be different because we had already been where we, you know, where we were doing everything ourselves. So we wanted to see how... It can be different and you know what can be what else can be in store for us because we really wanted to um level up you know our shows and everything it's it's very draining to do everything independently um yeah that's why we decided to release this album with payment 
uh, and you know, see how it goes. Yeah, it's been exciting so far. Yeah, get some support because, like you said, you can't do it all yourselves because that's no, uh, not yeah. really. No. I mean, you can, but it won't last long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or stick around, or it'll be a quick flash, or or what? Because you guys even you, you guys are producing your music, right? Yeah, we just we just love doing it. I mean, like at some point we just you know switched going to studios to our uh, home production and you know like self recording because n not always when you go to the studio and you pay a significant amount of money and you don't get the result you're looking for, and some of your demos they sound even like sharper and uh you you enjoy the sound and the whole production even more than you then what, what you what you what you get studio. yeah as a result from working with the producer at the studio so it was important for us to i guess um have this kind of like mastery of uh, of the craft how you record yourself from zero to to the final the hero, the hero yeah. yeah and because i guess we have a song called hero yeah this <laughs> This learning, this learning curve was kind of important for us, and I guess we've mastered it uh, pretty, yeah, pretty it was, well. Pretty it was well. also the question of money. Yeah, you know, as an immigrant, you don't make a lot of money. You work two jobs, no days off, and then you come back home where there's no AC, and you record the album literally naked yeah, because it's so too hot. This, and is the only in LA. this is the only sustainable, uh, sustain sustainable way to record yourself if you want to go ahead and, you know, move on with your with your songs. So. Yeah. The only thing that we don't do is we have uh, someone mixing our tracks. Yeah, we don't mix our stuff. So, But everything else, we, yeah, produce and record ourselves, and we are very proud of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys knocked it out of the park. Illumination Part One sounds amazing. Because who does the drums? There's a, there was a guy in uh, in Russia in Moscow. He was recording the drums for us remotely. We were in Los Angeles. Actually, we were in Los Angeles, but and then we were in Moscow. Moscow. Like the demo drums. Yeah. So the guy would follow my blueprints of the drum parts, but then he would add some, you know, extra flavors and some, you know, like professional, um, you know, I guess, uh, point, point of view to it. Yeah, the real drumming, the real drumming. But uh, yeah, we we're really proud of this one in terms of like the sound because the sound is big and huge, and this is what we were kind of like chasing for many many years. But we were not quite there, and this time we we're there fully. Yeah. fully. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you guys got there. That's for sure. Let's talk about a couple of the tracks on here. Well, first, let's talk about Hero, since Nika mentioned it. Song about Alexei Navalny, a Russian opposition leader. I mean, huge for you guys. This is, a, this is an amazing song. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the main, you know, the main point, you have already mentioned it, but I personally think it's I mean, Alexei definitely inspired me to write the lyrics, you it know, was the figure. Yeah. In, in the light of uh, his recent death, you know, I think this song acquires more meaning because it's basically about, you know, the, uh, the necessity to keep speaking out against anything that's not fair in this world. And especially, you know, we're nerds. We love Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. And this is why I don't understand how the same people who read the same stories and are Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings fans and, you know, other fantasy fans. And then they go and support the war, for instance. Or or they just don't, you know, they don't follow what they learn from these right. books, you right. know. And, and I strongly recommend anyone, even if it seems insignificant, you know, it, it, it matters to just speak your truth to you know to carry the light and to carry the um truth yeah. you know through your life and that's what the song is about I think and it's also about like stepping up and being your your own um like uh, example example and figure to follow like not, not it, it's not about like political issues or whatever like the the opposition yeah, we're or, not or, being or what not, what not it's a general statement about how you are responsible for your own life i think yeah. Yeah. Well, and another one with what's cool, you don't hear horns too much on an alt metal <laughs> album. And <laughs> there's a video on your guys' Facebook for the song When Do We Stop Growing Up and Start Growing Old? Nika, you were putting horns on this song before you even knew what the song was. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me. That was his idea. And honestly, uh, we, I mean, I know we're eclectic and some people would call us a metal band. I would say we're more rock. Uh, and we also have some pop songs. Yeah. And 
we're playing with genres like as much as we can to keep ourselves entertained um and that's why yeah it was I'm alex's just, idea i'm just obsessed with bringing some talented musicians you know to our records and adding some extra flavor and extra layers so um my initial idea was for the song triumphant to have the horns in the breakdown i thought what a wonderful idea to have a breakdown to go to do to go to do to go to do yeah with the it's like it's kind of dorky but you know that was my plan and then we just had some i guess we had some extra studio time and we were able to record two songs with the brass section <laughs> yeah, it, I, just it, it, doing it, I don't know it, it sometimes it doesn't really make much sense <laughs> but it's just whatever it's just, keeps us it's entertained fun, it's fun to <laughs> yeah, experiment i guess exactly well and the road you just released the video this is like a prequel to noble knight because you watch noble knight you're like hey hold on here what and you talk about harry potter and fantasy land tell what tell us a little bit about the the two videos um well we love fantasy stuff and we love video games and we play video games so this is the main topic of the video um you know as people playing games and just basically living through their characters uh, and we filmed it in Sequoia National Park um, in California, one of our favorite places. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, the topic of the good and the bad, the white and black, the yin and yang, it just goes through pretty much like almost all of our videos, almost all of our songs. And this is something that we love playing with. In in this video, you can see me dressed as a white elf you know we when we can go to skyrim with references we can go to the lord of the rings you know and um even um um game of thrones where sure. you know there's yeah. daenerys and there's Jon snow dressed in black so like it's a lot of references that we put together you know again to keep ourselves entertained and uh yeah to share it with our fans who you know who we're not afraid to also, you know, be geeks and yeah, because we don't divide music and cinematography. I guess yeah. it's it's we we love it all, you know, movies, TV shows, and music and records. We get inspired from we can get inspired inspired musically from a video game for like for example, uh, The Witcher uh, Three, uh, The Wild Hunt. The music is just magnificent. Yeah, right? we even had it as an intro. Yeah, yeah. to our show, live shows. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, sometimes you would be like, ask, hey, like, hey, what's the latest record that got you inspired and stuff? And like, records? I don't really. It's a video like, game. I yeah, yeah, I don't really <laughs> listen to records anymore, but the video games, that, now we're talking, you know? So it's, yeah. it's a uh, di different source of inspiration. Oh, yeah. You get inspired from all kinds of different places. Well, and you guys like making videos. You guys have made quite a few of them. Yes, we love it, but we 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 have also taken a break from them because you know the nowadays the content is changing so rapidly that we have obviously realized that you know we have to focus on short form content lately. On shorts. Um okay. yeah, and not that much on long videos, you know, with big budget. So yeah, I don't know if we're gonna make any more, you know, long videos but uh we have quite a few of them so far we so. just we were lucky enough to have our friends who were uh, also inspired to make some art with us and uh, all those videos uh, you're referring to well, maybe 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 like 90 percent of them were uh budget free for us i mean like or very yeah, very yeah. so the cheap. people just the people who just help us out you know because they would believe in our idea yeah, uh, but and it would be fun. This time, ha this time has long gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, go and check them out. Go follow them. Go support them. ChaseTheComet.com. They're on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify. Illumination Part One is out now. Well, I heard Alex, you're a Russian blogger. You're doing blogs about the music scene. What's what's going on? Kinda, yeah. So there's one um, Russian punk rock band that really got me on my music tr uh, musical track back in 2002, 2003. So I got really inspired. And uh, last year, this uh, this band uh, got a TV show uh, dedicated to the band, right? So this was the second wave of the popularity of the band, even though the band does not exist. It's been for it's been for like ten years. So the uh, the main singer he died in 2013. So the band doesn't exist anymore. 
but the fuzz, you know, is still there. And I was just starting making short videos on YouTube about the TV show, like my reaction and like reviews and stuff, some my, some personal comments pretty much. And uh, the video started like gaining much attention, many, many views, like 200,000 views, like 300,000 views, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. Million. And I, wow, this is really working for me. And uh, this is what I dedicated my some of my spare time to. And uh, as of now, I have almost uh, 50,000 uh, subscribers on my YouTube page. But yeah, as you said, it's in Russian. I do lots of translations also, like um, some interviews from Metallica, Ozzy Osbourne, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I do Sharon. Yeah, Nick, Nick, <laughs> Nick, Nick and us, Sharon. So we do lots of uh, voiceovers and translations for the Russian folk uh, who don't speak English. <laughs> so um, yeah, that too. And uh, yeah, it's been fun so far. Yeah, that's, that's it's been working so far. What's most important? <laughs> exactly, it's working. Probably giving you a little bit of income, which which is nice. So, I mean, there's had to have been some times where you guys have just looked at each other and went, "What the hell are we doing?" I mean, are we going to keep at this? I mean, how rough has the road been? Um, rough, very rough. Especially the last year. Especially yeah. the la the last few years. As I said, we've been dealing with some documents issues. And uh, that, you know, took a lot of our energy. Um, we had been illegal immigrants unintentionally. We had become them. And then we were waiting for a long time to figure that out. And, and then COVID hit. And then we were finally able to uh, get new visas. And we were so excited to come back to the U.S. We had an investor interested in us. Um, and uh, then the war started and the investor said, I'm sorry, I can't work with uh, Russians anymore. So, you know, that fell through. Yeah. And after that, it was really, really hard um, to, you know, to understand how to plan things. Right. To, to the point that we just stopped, you know, working on the band and, you know, dedicating any time to the band. So we just went to Argentina. Then we got back in the United States. Then we went, went to Colombia. And in Colombia, we did not do anything. Anything, anything. Yeah, so We were just like recharging our batteries, as Nika said. The problem, we were not practicing, writing any new songs, nothing. The, not problem, the problem was that we were actually asking ourselves if we wanted to keep doing that, if we needed to keep doing that. Because, you know, it's that age in our life. It's that time in our lives where, you know, we, we want to see some results. And we want to keep moving, right? And in our minds, we had done anything and, and everything we could and more, you know, to keep going with the band and to get somewhere to play shows. And it, it just felt like we, we you know, it, it never really worked to the point where we were happy, you know? And uh, yeah, that's why we, we started... Um, well, I personally reconnected with the earth and, you know, started uh, looking into some indigenous cultures. I spent a week living with a tribe in Colombia. And psychotherapy as well, right? Yes, yes. And uh, therapy. Yeah, we, we, I guess we still have some personal issues. issues like, uh, but, I mean, who does, right? But, but, but that's, you know, that's interesting because our album pretty much reflects that path. And I think a lot of people after COVID are going through the same thing and just, just trying to understand how to live in this, you know, in new this, reality. Yeah. New yeah. Anti-utopia. Yeah. All right. And yeah, that's I think that's the point of our album, you know, to take you where you're not feeling well yourself and then take you to the point where you still have hope, where you still think okay, while I, you know, while I draw my breath, you know, there's still hope. Where you hear the horns in the breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's the point of music. All the indigenous cultures say that music is sacred and, you know, it helps us out of dark places, but it also leads us to, you know, to, to this uh, reincarnation it's or It's just, it's whatever. become, it's become so mass market oriented. So it's like, it's not really valid anymore in like new music, right? There's so much of it. Yeah. If you, uh, if I'm taking the statistics of the daily Spotify new uploads, it's like 300, 30, a lot, 300,000 songs. It's a insane. Day. Yeah. Oh, so this is crazy. Like, how are you supposed to? promote your stuff if there's so much music you know out there yeah. 
Well, so we still yeah. do it though, because it's important for us to do it for ourselves first, you know, without any expectations. And uh, if you enjoy, if uh, the listeners enjoy our music, you know, then we're doing yay. something right. Yeah, exactly. that's interesting. you know, we're happy to share. And, you know, if it touches you, your soul, then we, we've done it right. Yeah. Yeah, go and check them out. Go and follow them. Go and listen to it. Illumination Part 1 is out now. It's awesome. And, and you two, it's incredible. I mean, you two are still together. I mean, that's that's amazing <laughs> right? through all of this. Yeah. I mean, After 16 years. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys have been through a lot. So go and support them. They're doing what they want to do, and uh, it's awesome. So, guys, keep at it. Thank you. Keep positive. Stay strong. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's Chase the Comet. Here is The Road by Chase the Comet. It's the takeover. CBJRadio.com.